has been in, involved in NET since many years. And Tony, we've got, looking forward to what you've got to tell us from your many, many years of experience in, uh, in NET. Over to you. Yeah, thank you, man. Manfred. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I came from BAM and a lot of that what we are doing in the moment in the research area was presented by Mr. Kreuzbrook. So I will give you a little bit of other information what we are doing in BAM, for instance, what we are doing in Germany. The title is an overview about NDT in Germany. So I will try to start with a short introduction. Then I came to a, the organization, what is in the, how is the NDT in Germany organized? And then I will give you a little bit information about that what normally is called advanced NDT techniques or methods and afterwards a short conclusions. Non-destructive testing in Germany. Yeah, the application of non-destructive methods in Germany are comparable to other countries. They are using these uh, methods for maybe for the inspection of the quality of components or materials. Therefore, uh, if I give an overview, it is not different from other countries. But what is the difference in Germany to other countries after the Second War? There was, it was forbidden in Germany to have high energy X-ray tubes. We had only X-ray tubes for the medicine, but not for materials testing. And the quality control of thick wall components, especially for the transportation, and the transportation was one of the big issues coming up after the Second War, was a challenge for the engineers at that time in Germany. And at that time, we are very strong involved on the development of new technique, a technique 1937. It was uh, published from the US, from Firestone, and Mr. Krautkramer, Krautkramer is the name, he has collected this idea and he has produced some ultrasonic inspection systems and with these systems we can overcome this inspection problem we had in Germany at that time. The history about Krautkramer you can see on the internet, it was 1946, and he had worked very, very hard in a garage. At that time, it was an unusual uh, building for some people. They are starting a new development. And in um, 1951, they had the first equipment available. And at that time, they have measured the axis on the German rail. And the number of the cracks at the German rails goes down from this time. All the equipment, and maybe for somebody who is a little bit older than I, he, he knows this equipment very well. With this equipment, they start the inspection on the German rails. What is the organization in Germany? You see on the logo here that is the German Society for Non Destructive Testing. And the German Society for Non-Destructive Testing is rep representative which coordinates all NDT activities in Germany concerning the interests of their members, all companies using NDT, research institutes, universities, and others. And I will give you also a little bit of information afterwards about the link between the university, the institutes, and the industry in Germany. This is sometimes a big discussion if you're talking about training of NDT people. Yeah, the German societies has always attached uh, particular importance for the practical training of non-destructive testing personnel. And you can see on the slide more than 50,000 trainees have attended courses in the German society for non-destructive testing in the, last, in the past uh, 60 years. Yeah, further training, but not is also carried out on the university and also on manufacturer, Karl Deutsch, and also General Electric, they are also give training for NDT personnel. 
and some universities in Germany, some research institute, as the BAM or the ICFP, they are also involved in this field. Yeah, the organization of the German Society for Non-Destructive Testing. There are a lot of committees of experts for the different kind of NDT methods. And you can see here leak tightness, materials characterization, optical methods, acoustic emission, radiography, ultrasound, and so on, and so on. And we have also special committees, and one of the special committees is the NDT teacher, teacher at the universities. In this uh, special committee, some teachers of the universities are come together every year and they are discussing about the uh, lectures, what we should do, what we should go in the future in the university, what we should give, what kind of lecture, or where we will have to focus in the future. Then we have tra training schools organized by the German Society of non destructive Testing in the whole Germany, Berlin, Dortmund, Munich, and so on. And all in these schools, they are carried out trainings for level one, level two, and level three personals for the different kind of methods. I coming now to a little bit to the advanced ultra uh, NDT non-destructive testing methods, and I will give you some examples. Some examples about X-ray techniques, ultrasonic phased array techniques, and eddy current techniques. And what is the requirement for NDE for advanced NDE? We should have the possibility to detect defects. The second one is the sizing, and then, if possible, the characterization. But size is one that is uh, five times ten or something like that, but if you can say this is a crack, or maybe this is a slight inclusion, or maybe a lack of fusion, that should be, that's very good if you can give this information. Also, you can give this information maybe for fracture mechanic fields. I will come back to this point a little bit later. Okay, come with to the X-ray technique. The normal X-ray technique is well known since 1901. Uh, 1901, uh, Renton uh, received the Nobel Prize. Was the first. Uh, guy in physics, he received this prize and other people are working in this field and one name for the computer tomography is Radon. He was living 1887 until 1956 and the principle of the Radon transformation you can see here on the equation and the principle of the computer tomography at this, that equation, you must have a circumference information about the object, and if you have this, then you can calculate at that uh, case, at that special case, density differences in this object. But normally, you know, but in the moment you cannot only always use 360 degrees, sometimes it's enough 180. And if we go more in the future, then we will use an other technique. We also on X-ray computer tomography, but a, plus, but a technique with planar. There is no possibility maybe to go around the object. You have only the possibility maybe you can, can go in this direction. And if they have a special designed X-ray tube, with a very large opening angle, 30 degree or more, then you got enough information if you scan in this direction and you can reconstruct the information. The principle is the same than by the, than by the computer tomography and afterwards you can also uh, evaluate the different scans here in different areas and from this 
information, you can evaluate the depth of the defect and also length extensions and so on. One of the um, examples is showing here. That's a manipulator device. We have used this manipulator device for the inspection of tubes. And we are moving along this direction, the X direction of the tube. And the detection was here in the depth direction of the tube. And one of the results you see here, there are a number of cracks. And if we have now more slices, so we can evaluate the depth of these cracks. This was a technique that was qualified, qualified by the German ENIC pilot study. And you see here the technical justification, the written procedure, and the concept description, and so on. And that is a classical example where a research was carried out a lot of time in the laboratory. Mr. Kreuzberg shows some very good uh, plot about the time, five years, ten years, if you come from the laboratory version to the industry version. And that is that what we have done here. It takes also approximately ten years. We came from the laboratory uh, work and then now we are in the industry and now it's a available and can be used in the industry in the industrial application. A new one, what we are working in the moment is the so-called high energy X-ray radiography. This is the first example I show you. It's approximately two weeks old. And we have a very big manipulator device. And on this manipulator device we put here an container, maybe you know, use such kind of containers, and the inside of the container you can see here, there are a lot of electrical devices inside, computer, uh, platter, and other things, and the X-ray source, for that time we are using a Betatron 7.5 mega electron volt, and a digital detector on the other side, and we scan here, in this direction, the scan velocity at that time was approximately uh, 0.5 millimeter per second. The integration time, one second per image. The number of scans you see here, and so on, and so on. And I can show you the first result. And the first result of the scan you can see here. We have here some electronic part, the boards. We can see the boards inside and here some mechanical parts of the printer. That's how the first results and maybe we can use this technique uh, later, maybe not more for the safety, more for the security. If we are looking for cracks, then we are going more in the safety direction. If we are looking for such things, we are look going more in the security direction. So what we are doing about uh, ultrasound, phased array technology is well known. We are starting with the phased array technology in 1979. We had at that time a research program from the German Ministry of Technology and we are de have developed an ultrasonic equipment uh, together with our colleagues from the ICFP and Saarbrücken. They have used at that time so-called charge cover devices, the real phased array, but the advantage of this is phased array, you can change the phase, but you must have a burst. And we have used so-called tap delay lines, and with tap delay lines we can steer by the time. So we can use, not, we must use not burst, so we can also use pulse, Pulses normally used in the ultrasonic uh, application. And the phased array technology, you can hear a lot in, during this uh, conference about uh, total focusing methods, dynamic focusing, full capture and so on. I will go a little bit in another way. You saw also a little bit information about matrix, the application of uh, matrix arrays by the presentation of Mark Reutzburg. I will go a little bit on another way. I will go on that way. What we can do with phased array with Toft or with Saft? 
and soft is required, you must have a really wide opening angel and that you can normally realize with a small crystal, small depends on the wavelengths and here we have realized this big opening by changing the angle of incidence and that time we uh, have used the TOF technique uh, for the inspection of a uh, 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 component with a crack, the crack was here there was detected a crack in this area, but we believe that that's what is a crack. There was an indication, and we have measured the depths here using the tough technique with phased array probes. And we have one probe was fixed for the illumination of this area, and the other probe was moving in this direction. And the calculation of the crack steps is not is a little bit complicated, but not really complicated. Uh, compared with the conventional TOF technique. Here an example of the uh, B-scan for uh, this application. The other one is the soft synthetic aperture focusing technique. Also that is required that you have a big opening angle and we have also used for that the phased array technique. The calculation function you see here, the integral you have summed up the information in this area here and this is done here by this equation and if you do this reconstruction procedure then you get the results, this is the same result or the same component than before we are looking about the defect that's here in this area and we have here the correct tip indication and here the indication generated by the corner reflection and the distance between this both is the defect depth. The application of Eticarnt techniques. Eticarnt for the inspection of cladded components. Normally we are looking about cracks, cracks starting from the surface, so-called surface breaking cracks. Cracks maybe if you have two layers in between the layers and cracks Beneath, uh, between the uh, cladding and the base metal. One minute. Okay, then I must go really fast and I skip this one and come to the new one, okay. There is another one uh, for the inspection of tubes, very thin tubes, 1.12 millimeter thick. And we used that, that uh, for this example, a so-called uh, uh, X-ray tube that a lot of coils here uh, in this uh, uh, system and uh, if you use that then we have an array and by the combination of the signal we can calculate the depth extension and also the depth length. And if we have carried out this uh, technique in the practice we are, have very very close work together with fracture mechanic people. We are looking what are the critical defects for here for this kind of steam generated tubes and how we can compare these critical defects with the results of our techniques. I gave a presentation some weeks ago, ago about fracture mechanics and this kind of techniques. Yeah, coming to the conclusion, the German Society for Non-Destructive Testing is the representative for the most activities concerning in the T in Germany. I told and advanced in the team methods are used by the industry and are nowadays required in the specification standards and code, codes. Such advanced in the team methods with potential of sizing and characterization. I gave you some example about ultrasonic phase array technique, X-ray computer tomography, as well as the current array techniques. Thank you for your attention. If there is a question, please uh, ask it now. We will allow one question. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. One is the link? One, yes. Yeah, Rainer Link, uh, Tony, uh, you uh, has, have shown the radiograph of this uh, container. Yeah. And uh, I remember sometime one year ago when I saw that um, or learned that the American government would like to see all containers shipped from uh, exporting uh, 
ports yeah. to the United States have to uh, to be inspected by not even radiographic inspection, but uh, by um, computerized tomography. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell something about this? Um, but there's a different solution. You see, we have seen some uh, wires on the boards inside a container, and here you have only uh, rough information. But they are 20 uh, uh, foot containers they have uh, looked there, yeah? and you have only an information about the big things inside, but not what is in these big in things inside. For instance, we can look about, uh, look about the boards or something like that, about the uh, mechanical parts of, of something like that. That's the difference. Is the American government still following this plan? We are the government. Oh, that is. Uh, we are following that, but the government. The American. I, government. The American. <coughs> Can you give an information, Uber? Yes. The American government are following this way. This is the so-called HR one law, which was introduced and is a valid law since 2012. The only problem is. Nobody is able to make 100% of radiographic inspection yet. Um, computer tomography is not involved in the law, just radiographic scanning. And well, they did not yet uh, miss for the law. So the only point is that international harbors silently equip um, container inspection. Okay, this is the, this is, uh, and what is the future? <coughs> the question was about the future. The future will be that uh, companies will come up with machines to inspect and uh, politically people will try to find compromises. Okay. <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>